Hey guys, for those of you that don't know me, I have been a challenger player since set three. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys a guide on how to climb in patch 14.8. So in this patch, there were a few pretty big system changes. I'm going to briefly go over them because they will impact the way you play in this patch. First thing is they briefly changed the amount of gold you get for streaks. Basically, you start getting one gold at the two streak breakpoint now. What this means is that if you were to five win streak or five lose streak from two one to two six, you're basically going to be a little bit richer and that little gold really adds up because it scales really hard into late game. Second thing is that they change how player damage is calculated. I think that the most important part, th most important thing here is that if you were to full open, you will on average be about two to three HP healthier than the last patch. They also, the three cost unit odds also took a hit at level seven and they also briefly buffed the two cost odds at level seven. So this is a hard nerf to three cost reroll comps and an indirect buff to two costs. They did nerf the fortune five heal, but I also think that fortune three got indirectly buffed from points A and B because you'll be a bit healthier and a bit richer. What these changes mean is that you will be heavily rewarded for full opening until stage three, two. This will basically indirectly buff all the two cost reroll comps because they all spike at stage three, two and comboed with the increased odds at level seven for the two cost reroll comps, then basically like hard nerfs all the three cost ones and the two cost ones, which basically leads to the current meta of why Nar and Kindred is super, super strong right now, along with Senna and Janna, those two comps are pretty viable as well. But the three cost reroll comps are pretty much gutted. You can't really play them anymore. In the current meta, I think it is a very AD heavy meta. I think that if you're trying to play tempo, you should just almost always try to default towards Kai'Sa. Kai'Sa is a comp that you could play into from many different openers. The main one is going to be the Storyweaver opener where you dual carry the Teemo and the Sivir. Second one is the Ink Shadow Senna opener. Usually if you're playing into this opener, you could either reroll into Senna or if you're contested, you could just transition into the Ink Shadow Kai'Sa variants. And then you could also play into the uh, Kaisa, Kaisa comp from the Fortune opener. Because in the Fortune opener, you're generally playing around Teemo. You also have Kobuko as your bruiser. And your late game Kaisa board is going to be four bruiser and four trick shots. So it's also just a pretty smooth transition as well. The bruiser uh, tree is going to be a little bit different in the current patch. In the last patch, there were a lot of like reroll comps like Duelist, Yone that really benefited from like these bruiser items. But in the current patch, uh, you really want to be playing around these two cost comps. So reroll Nar is going to be the prime user of like these Titans, BT, Sterex, Hodge items. And then you could play into the Yone tree, but the Yone tree is slightly different now. You're instead going to be playing into Vertical Heavenly and your trio carrying the Kane, Lee Sin, and Wukong along with Morgana. I'll go into this later into the video. I think if you have AP items, you really have only two options. I would say three. You could either, if you could get to nine, you play around the legendary board. Otherwise, Faded, in my opinion, is probably the most consistent AP-ish comp you could play. Uh, if you get like an opener for reroll Janna, that's also like a pretty good comp you could play into as well for AP items. But I would say that this strategy is going to be the strategy you want to be playing if you're playing in patch 14.8. I'll go into the comps now. So in the S tier, we have Legendary Fast 9. This includes both the AD and the AP variants, both very good. Bruiser Trick Shots, very, very consistent. Very, very, probably the strongest level 8 board you could play into. Fortune at 2-1, if you know how to pilot this correctly, it's almost always a top 2. You just giga cash out and transition into this Bruiser comp, and you're almost always going to hit because you're going to have like 40 gold on the rest of the lobby, and you, you're able to roll at an early earlier interval than everybody else. And finally, Reroll Nar is the last comp in S tier. This comp is... SS tier if you're uncontested, but even if you're contested, you could either go for either like a three star Kindred and then push levels or a three star Nar. You don't need both. Uh, if you're contested, you just go for one and then you push levels and then play tempo and you could still top four. In the A tier, we have Heavenly Kane slash Lee Sin. The play style for this is very similar to Yone, except you don't go for three star Yone. You're just playing for Lee Sin, Kane, Morgana, Wukong. Built Diff. Again, a super strong comp and the stats are all in the 4.0 4.0x range. Really, really consistent if you know how to play around it. Vertical Faded, really consistent. We will go see a great comp to play into if you have like a lower opener, low roll opener, full open into 3-2 and roll for the Senna board and you have the option of rerolling for Senna or playing into Kai'Sa. And reroll Kog'Maw is going to still be viable as a one cost reroll comp. This comp becomes especially good if you get an augment like too much candy or if it's like a giga econ uh, econ galaxy and you can just hit everything at Krugs because you have 50 gold to roll. Econ guide is generally the same. 
And I updated the augments to reflect what's broken in the current patch. So we have like Reroll Nar, Heavenly Cane, etc. By the time this video is posted, I will be streaming. So I would really appreciate it if you guys come check my stream out if you have any questions as well. And finally, we could jump right into the guide. So the one reroll comp that you really want to know how to play in this patch is going to be reroll Nar and Kindred. So for this comp, you I don't think you could really full open into the, this comp like Senna because this comp heavily relies on you farming a lot of these Dryad stacks. What Dryad basically does is for each kill you get, your Dryads get like a bunch of uh, damage and HP. And the HP you get in the early game is actually pretty relevant because in the mid game, it's going to enable you to win a lot of fights that you might not be able to, which will basically farm you even more HP. It basically scales like throughout the early, mid, and late game. So I would play into this comp if you get like an early Gnar or like an early Kindred. Uh, and I think it's important for you to have the early game two-star rec side because you need to be able to kill units early game. If you have that set up, then go ahead and just hard commit to this comp. It doesn't even matter too much if you're two way or one way contested, because I think it can support two players. If one player like rerolls for one and another player rerolls for other the other, you could just push levels and play it into the level eight board, and it's actually like still top fourable. But let's say that you're not consistent. This is going to be the level six board that you want to play around. You want to play around Kha'Zix and not something like Yone, just because Kha'Zix is only three gold and Yone two is kind of useless without any items on it. You want to save up your gold and go for Nar three and Kindred three. At three two, just slow roll until you hit these units. And then once you hit both of them, you could push levels. Once you hit Orn, your board is instead going to look something like this. Your uh, Orn, when you get Orn in, you could look to play it Behemoth instead of the Bruiser. And this will be your level seven board. And then you can push levels even more. And then at level eight, you can play into a board like this. I would say that this is going to be like the default level eight cheap board that you want to play into. You're going to be playing around four ghostly, one, two, three, four. And then you have two behemoth. You also have two warden. Uh, there are a few options you can play around. So like, for example, the giga expensive version of this is if you hit like Azir and like Annie and Lissandra, then your board will probably look something like this instead. And then you also have the option, if you get a Dryad plus one, you can most likely drop the Annie, play the Rek'Sai again, and then just Dryad plus one your Cane. And then that board with six Dryad will basically probably top two almost all the time. Itemization wise, um, Nar really likes Hodge, Titans, and Sterix. Titans kind of got nerfed, so I think Sterix is the one you really want to go for now. And then Kindred does really well with Morello, blue buff plus one full damage item. The third damage item could either be something like Death Cap. It could also be Guard Breaker. GS is pretty good as well. Keep in mind that if you're playing around Reaper, you already have built-in crit for Kindred. So generally, you just want to go raw damage. Um, that's pretty much it for this comp. Uh, on to the next one. So the other Bruiser comp that is pretty strong in the current meta is going to be Heavenly Kane. You might notice that this comp looks pretty similar to the Yone 3 board, except it's just going to be playing around Kane, Lee Sin, and you just tech in two Dragon Lord. You're not playing four Reaper, you're just going to be playing two, but in this variant, you're going to be carrying a Lee Sin and later on a Morgana if you if you find her. Uh, the reason why this comp is still pretty good is because that in the current meta, the Darius opener is still one of the most broken openers in the game. So if you hit like Darius 2 and then you have the two Behemoth, two Umbral opener with these items, it's still almost always like a five win streak into three two, which will allow you to get to this comp with a lot of HP and a lot of gold to spare and will let, allow you to safely top four. So in this comp, uh, it'll be hard to hit like the Lee Sin, but one like mid game board you play around to hold Lee Sin and K items is going to be actually the four Heavenly, four Reaper board. So if you remember this exact board from last patch with Yone, you're instead going to hold all your Lee Sin items on your Yone 2, and you hold all your like Morgana slash Soraka items on your Kindred 2, and just play a 4 Heavenly, 4 Reaper mid game. This is still good because you're not still relying on the Yone 3. You're just going for Yone 2, Kane 1, and this is still good. And yet this board is still really strong because like the three cost odds is not going to impact you getting like a two star Yone that much. Once you're able to get like a all the heavenly units like Wukong and you're able to get like a two star Lee Sin, then you could fuck off these Yone and the, these Kindred uh, units and then move the items over onto your Soraka and your on your and your Lee Sin. And your board will look like this. And you're just going to be playing around six heavenly to D Lord. If you had a heavenly spot, just put on your Diana for seven heavenly. One thing to note is that the break point from six to seven got nerfed. So it's not as impactful to play seven anymore. So I would say that if you get a heavenly plus one, it's actually safe to drop the Soraka if you're able to get a Morgana two star. Uh, because Soraka really gives your team AP and most of your damage is coming from your Kane and Leeson anyway, which are AD units. So I think this break, this little break point is not that impactful from uh, if you're playing Soraka. 
honestly, even if you're only playing around like five heavenly, if you get like a Morgana too, I still think it's better to just drop the Soraka for Morgana just because Morgana is generally way better at spreading Morello and it also gives you like two ghostly for your cane as well. Um, that's pretty much it for this comp. You just push levels after you hit everything. Go for Wukong 2 for like a fourth carry if you uh, if you hit it. And then, yeah, that's it. Usually a safe top four, but not a first. So the other really good comp in the current patch is going to be Reroll Senna. This is going to be a level 6 two-cost Reroll comp. And the playstyle is very similar to the last patch. I think that the tattoos stats got changed. I don't know what they did to some of these tattoos, but the ones that are only really good right now for this comp are going to be Tattoo of Fury or Tattoo of Protection. I think the best one, according to stats, is going to be this one, and you put it on the center. Uh, for this comp, the level 6 board is just going to be exactly this. You generally want to play into this comp if you get like a center opener with Caitlyn and like a random Jax 2. You can play into this if you have like the right tattoo. If you have like bow, a lot of bows, gloves, swords, you play into this. Uh, if you also have like a low roll opener and you need to find something to play at level 6 and it's not NAR, you can full open into this comp as well. The good thing about this comp is that if you if you and another player had the same idea, both of you could survive. Um, one basically goes for center three and shen three, and the other person needs to push levels and go for the level six board with six ghostly and slowly transition into either, uh, slowly transition into Kaisa. So in this variant where you push eight, you just play into six ghostly without the Kaisa. This is the this is the variant where you hit shen three and center three. Jax leaves for Uzir when you find him, and you're just playing around the Kane and the Morgana. Uh, this is going to be your final level 8 board. It's very pretty impossible for you to go 9 because you spent all your money rolling for Shen 3 and Senna 3. If you get to a board like this, usually a top 3. Itemization wise, Senna just really likes Last Whisperer, IE, and like the, whatever tattoo it is. If it's not this tattoo, you just stick on like another item on her. Random GS, random Gwinsu's, anything is fine. Shen just gener generically likes 3 tank items, and if you get Tattoo of Protection, you just slap it on him as well. In the variation where you can't reroll and you need to push levels, you can look to play into like a board like this. Of course, this is like the Giga Cap level eight board that you slowly want to pivot into. You won't initially find like Azir, Zaya, Udir uh, initially, but you could like look for these units in the shop. Initially, you're probably going to be playing some variation of like four ghostly. For example, like this Shiv is probably still going to be on the Caitlyn, and then you're probably still playing the Shen over this Orn for like two Behemoth with, and for Uzir. And then you probably don't even need a trick shot. I think that if you're transitioning into the Kaisa board uh, from the Senna, you actually don't need two trick shot that much. I think that four trick shot is really good, but two trick shot is like kind of mid if you don't have items for like the second trick shot. So like I think it's better to like if you have like a Shiv, it's better to just play one trick shot and put the Shiv on like a random Azir if you find it, as opposed to like a Teemo. Uh, that's my opinion because Azir is really good; it gives you a bit more frontline and also synergizes very well with the Orn as well. Additionally, like if at your level eight roll down, if you're rolling down and you look and you find like the four bruiser variant instead, you could also play it into that board as well. I'm gonna go into all of like the different uh, Kaisa board variations you could play in the next clip. On to some of the level eight boards. The most dominant four cost in the current patch is still going to be Kaisa. So this comp just has a very, very consistent level eight board. It's actually not that expensive at all. You're playing around Sivir, Teemo, Aatrox, Riven. All you need to do is hit a one-star Kaisa and a two-star Silas or a Galio, and you're somewhat stable. If you hit a two-star Kaisa, you could then go straight to nine and look for the third Ink Shadow, something like Udir. So there is another variation to playing four Bruiser. Uh, alternatively, like you don't have to play like the three-story story Weaver variant if the Ink Shadow item is good. Like let's say like it's tattoo of like whatever, or you don't have like a third item for a Kaisa. You could just play into the two bruiser, two behemoth variant, but this is under the assumption that you find Udir. If you don't find Udir, it is not worth it. But the board will then look like this. Uh, you generally don't want to drop down to two trick shots in my opinion, or else you just lose too much damage. You either play one trick shot and a really strong front line with Azir, or you play four trick shots and like some random front line that you find. I think that if you're able to get to nine, and you end up having like a lot of money to re like flip your board even more. You can play into the Giga Cap board, which is going to be the Dragon Lord variant. You're basically dropping out of all of the bruisers because they get, end up getting outscaled late game. And you're going to be playing around the Behemoths and the Dragon Lords instead. Here, you just move all the Teemo items to, to Azir, and then you're dual carrying the Kaisa and the Zaya. Put whatever carousel items you find in the Zaya, and then you just fully itemize your Orn, not the Udir, because Orn will then give feed more items to the rest of your frontline units. Um, this comp uh, is probably very popular to play into if you have the fortune opener. It just so happens that for the fortune opener, it is a very smooth transition into this comp. 
you're playing Kabuko, which is a bruiser. You're also ending up playing the Teemo, and chances are you're usually playing around the Tristana with the second Duelist. And Tristana is usually a pretty decent holder for all of these Kaisa items as well. Not that it matters too much because you're trying to lose when you're playing Fortune anyway, but it's going to help you kill a lot of units if you're itemizing Tristana in this way. Speaking of itemization, Kaisa still really likes Last of Sur, IE, and GS. Just make sure you have some type of anti-heal like Sunfire or Morello. If you don't have either of these, it's fine to slap on like a red buff on the Kaisa. Or if you have like Tattoo of Toxin, then you probably just put that on Kaisa instead for the anti-heal as well. The broken unit, I think that Zaya's stats are really good. But I still think Kaisa is the main carry of this comp. I think Zaya's stats... Uh, the, the, the fact that you could even play into Zaya is because of Kaisa. But Zaya itself, a naked Kaisa, Zaya is still really, really strong with, uh, without any items. Like, I've seen, like, some of the, my random fights, three-item Kaisa and then two-star Zaya with no items. Zaya somehow does 3k damage while, while Kaisa does eight. So you just put all of your, like, leftover remaining carousel items on your Zaya, and then usually it's, like, a top two. Our next comp is going to be Built Diff. Uh, what Built Diff basically does is that it basically rewards you for not playing any traits at all. Gives your units a bunch of extra HP and like stat attack speed. Uh, in this comp, you really want to be playing Built Diff if you have either a lot of uh, econ or like a lot of like itemization. Because of, if all of your units naturally have like a lot of stats, they're only going to benefit that much more from more items. So the more items you have in a Built Diff comp, the stronger you will get as opposed to playing like a, a normal, like random non-built diff comp. So in the built diff comp, there are a few uh, really good units that you generally want to play around at level eight. They're going to be Orn, Kaisa, Lissandra, and Annie. Annie just real just does really well in built diff for some reason. She has like a lot of survivability and damage. Orn is good because she con he constantly gives your team more items. And like I said before, the more items you have on your built diff units, the stronger they will get. And Lissandra does the same thing, except she farms items for you permanently. Generally, Kaisa is still going to be your primary DPS if possible. If you don't find the Kaisa, then um, yeah, I mean, I guess you could play around the Ash. But the, the problem it, playing around Ash is you, do, you if you play around the Ash, you can't really play around the Lissandra. And you really want to play around the Lissandra because you want to consistently farm more items at level 8. For this comp, I generally do not like rolling at 4-2 just because your level 8 board is going to be extremely expensive. Your cap level 8 board is going to be 2-star all of these units, which is going to be a much more expensive board as opposed to a normal board because it has no 1 or 2 or 3 cost units at all. So on average, this board is way more expensive, so I like rolling at a bit a later interval to guarantee that I hit everything. Itemization for all these units are generally the same, like just tank items on your main Orn, all of your mana regen AP items on your Lissandra to get more items, all your AZ items on your Kai'Sa, and then TG on like all of your other random shitters that you 2-star. I think if you don't get this ideal board, there is like another option. Uh, the built diff comp is actually pretty easy to pilot. You literally just click every single four cost unit in the game and chances are you will not have like any other synergies at all. I would say to just like avoid Lilia because you really generally want to be playing around this Annie. Uh, you only can play around one of the bruisers, either Silas or Galio. And you can either play around one of the Kane or the Morganas. So if you don't have like a good Morello sweater, you probably just drop the Kane and play, Morello, uh, play Morgana to spread the Morello. But uh, don't be afraid of playing like duplicate units for this comp. Once you hit everything, you can then push level 9. The win comp, there's two win cons for this comp. It's either having Lissandra farm you infinite items or going for a 3-star 4-cost unit. Um, yeah, that's it. So the other comp you want to know how to play in the current patch is going to be Faded. Faded is important to know how to play because it's a comp to play into if you have like a lot of AP items. Like for example, you could kill Rod in many different ways if you're playing Faded. You could kill Rod with Gwinsu's. You could kill Rod with Syndra items like Archangels. You could kill all your tiers with Blue Buff. You could also kill your Rod by slamming Crown Yard on Thresh. You can make Spark on Thresh. Lots of different ways to use Rod in this comp, which is why this comp is quite good to know how to play uh, in the current meta in a very heavily AD meta. So this comp you generally want to play into if you get a two-star Yasuo or a two-star Ari early, uh, or if you get like a random Thresh or like a Aphelios drop, then it guarantees you like a very consistent early and mid game. Like for example, early game, you have three faded, you just link the Yasuo and the uh, Yasuo and the Ari for now, put all your tank items in your Yasuo, all your AP items in your Ari, and then you later move all the Ari items onto your Aphelios or Syndra, depending on what you slam, and all of your tank items for your, from your Yasuo onto your Thresh. In this comp at level 6, there's a chance you might have to slight roll for 5 faded just to stabilize a little. It's pretty easy to hit 5 faded at level 6 because the 5 units you're looking for are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pretty consistent. Even easier if you get a faded plus 1 because you don't need to find one of Thresh or Aphelios. 
Itemization wise, Aphilios really likes Red Buff, Gwinsu's, and Deathblade. If you don't get Deathblade, uh, you can also go I, E, Regard Breaker. Both are pretty decent. Syndra really likes Blue Buff, Archangels plus one. Third item could either be Shiv or Nashers. If you have Spark ready, it's better to go Nashers because you don't need double the shred, and all of your tank items just go on your Thresh. Mid game, uh, once you find a Thresh, you want to be linking the Yasuo and the Thresh, especially if you hit the five baited breakpoint because it gives your entire team a lot more shields. This comp is going to be a sustain comp, and you want to itemize your Aphilios to scale, uh, which is why you have stuff like Archangels on your Syndra, Gwintus on your Aphilios, because the fight usually goes on very, very long. Stuff that's good in this comp is stuff that scales very well with like the shields that Beta gives you. So like for example, because you're to get like 1 billion HP from your shield, it's not very good to go Warmogs on Thresh. Instead, you want to go items that give your Thresh more like armor or magic resist because the multiplicative effect of the resistances combined with the HP will give you more HP overall. Um, that's the uh, that's also st why like Ascension is good. The artifact that like the needlessly large gem that ascends your team is really good as well because it com combos well, very well with the playstyle of the comp. If you get a Faded Spat, you usually want to put the Faded Spat on the Orn, and you want to put all of your tank items on the Orn, because he will basically distribute your uh, like two to three items per fight, because the fight usually just goes on for so long. That's why Orn is so broken in this comp with Faded Spat. Uh, at level 8, you want uh, uh, one thing is that you don't want to be usually pushing for 3-star Aphilios or Thresh. It's way more consistent to go level 9 and look for the set. Because once you get the set, you want to link the set and the Thresh, and it'll basically give your entire team a bunch of Omnivamp, and your Syndra and your Aphilios will generally go infinite because Syndra gets poked down, she ults once with Archangels at like 100 AP, and she heals all the way back to full. So she becomes like a pseudo tank. And the really like best in slot item for set is going to be Edge of Night. If you get Edge of Night on set, he gets chunked down, ults back, and heals all the way back to full if you have Sudden Faded, and then he's usually at the back line and he just like kills her back line within like another ult. So set is really good. Uh, and if you have the Faded Spat, you basically just drop the Yasuo and just play like an Amumu. And this gives you Warden for set for more survivability and also gives you Porcelain for the Ash that you will play. That's pretty much it for the Faded Comp, probably the easiest comp to play in the current patch, but a very helpful comp to know how to play in your arsenal because it uses your rods and your tiers very well. On to the level nine boards, there are only two really consistent level nine boards you want to look to play around. Uh, one is with Aurelia and Azir, and the other one is going to be Kaisa and Azir. You don't want to be playing Huey. Huey is kind of like a little too weak to be playing on your level nine board. He's usually a good unit to play mid game if you want to be printing out like a level five or a five cost unit, or if you don't isn't hit the zero yet, and you need to want to hold like your AP items. So in that Aurelia variant, uh, you're just going to be playing a Dragon Lord slash Behemoth frontline, Azir for Invoker and Dryad, and Aurelia for Duelist. Really, really strong. If you hit two-star everything, wins out a lot of games. The other variation is just going to be the Trickshot variant, which is the trick shot, which is the variant that you most likely will be playing around because it's like a Kaisa meta. Uh, basically, you're just playing four Trickshot mid-game, and then you drop out of like the two shitter Trickshots and play it into the Dragon Lords and the Behemoths uh, late game with Azir as your secondary carry. Pretty straightforward. <laughs> I don't have anything to say. Whoever you two star, or uh, hopefully, like you put your tank items, your Udir, and whoever you two star, you want to put all their leftover items on them. Azir gets all of your Teemo items that you slammed previously, and then Kaisa gets all your AD items as usual, and Zaya just gets all the leftovers from Carousel. Um, yeah. All right, so this sums up my patch guide for patch 14.8. If you guys enjoyed this video as usual, would really appreciate the YouTube sub or follow on Twitch by the time I post this video. I will be streaming, so come check me out right here. I also have another YouTube channel where I post uh, VODs of my gameplay where I go through my thought process on each move I make. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check out that YouTube channel as well. I linked it in the description, and I'll see you guys in the B patch or in the next patch.